Hey, people of planet Earth. It's time for another mod battle. I'm sure you're aware that Vanilla Fallout 4 has an early game double barrel shotgun and a late game magazine fed semi-automatic shotgun. Somewhere in between the two, one would expect to find a pump action shotgun. But nope, we get nothing. To rectify this shameful omission, we need mods. And boy, or girl, or whatever you are, do I have plenty of mods to cover today. I'm displaying their names on screen right now. We've got eight different pump-action shotgun mods to look at, and many of them need additional patches. There's a lot of ground to cover, so let's get going. Oh, and before I forget, from now on, I'm going to put links to Bethesda.net versions of mods in the description. That should help anybody who's unfortunate enough to have to play this game on Xbox. I'm also going to update my older videos to include Xbox links as well, so look out for that. If you're looking in the description and you don't see a link for Xbox, that means the mod you're searching for was never ported over. Keep in mind that even when a mod does get ported, it likely won't have all the same functionality as the PC version. With that out of the way, let's actually get to the shotguns, which is what you came here for. Before I speak in depth about each of them, I first need to pick a winner, as usual. It's going to be difficult this week, since most of these shotguns aren't very good. Hell, some of them are so shitty, you don't even need eyes to see it. In the end, it's come down to two contenders, the Viper Arms Crate 6712 and the Hunting Shotgun. It's been a close race inside my mind, but I've decided to pick the Hunting Shotgun mod because it's lore-friendly and it has much better animations than the Crate Shotgun. It doesn't have as many attachments as the crate or some of the other weapons in this pack, but it's the weapon that's least broken and has the fewest annoyances right out of the box. Since it's my recommended choice, let's talk about it first. Like I already said, this gun is lore friendly since it appeared in Fallout New Vegas, and just like in that game, it's been integrated into leveled lists via script to serve as an intermediate step in between the double barrel and combat shotguns. There are 2K and 4K textures for this weapon. I grabbed the lower resolution version for obvious reasons. There's also two legendary variants out there in the Commonwealth. The Dinner Bell, returning from New Vegas, which can be found at Lynn Woods, and a shotgun called the Manhunter, found in the Fen Street Sewer. I like the model and textures on this weapon, and the animation is absolutely top notch. Unfortunately, you'll quickly notice that no matter how many shots you fire, You'll always reload 5 or 8 shells, depending on the capacity of your magazine tube. You'll also notice that in Power Armor 3rd Person, the weapon uses hunting rifle animations, which are workable, but make the weapon very slow to fire. That's bad, but luckily there are patches for both of these issues, at least on PC. The bullet counted reload patch makes your character only reload the rounds they actually expended. You'll of course need the bullet counted reload mod and Fallout 4 script extender. Unfortunately, the reload animation always shows you inserting a shell directly into the chamber, even if there would already be a shell there. This wouldn't work in real life, but it's not big enough of a problem to make a stink over. The crate version of the third-person power armor fix gives the hunting shotgun some much better third-person animations, which are compatible with bullet-counted reload. Now the shotgun is actually usable in third-person power armor. Lovely. As for attachments, this weapon has a decent selection, but I really wish there was more. There's many receivers, half a dozen barrels, three stocks, two pumps, the option for a reflex sight or a ring sight. You've got a bayonet, a suppressor, a couple different skins for this thing. The customization is on about the same level as vanilla Fallout 4's weapons, which isn't that great. Why did I recommend this mod if it doesn't impress me very much? Because despite not being that amazing, this shotgun has fewer issues than the rest of the ones I looked at, so it wins by default. Second on the list is the T6M, Pump Action Shotgun Rifle, which is a NIF-bashed weapon. That means it's cobbled together from parts taken from other vanilla guns. Personally, I don't like the look of this weapon, but at least it fits in with a vanilla game. It comes with an installer. You'll definitely want to enable the bullet-counted reload option, or else support for that mod won't be installed. Besides that, there are two unique versions, one called Annabelle, that can be found at the Railroad Outpost, south of Vault 111 which has been rechambered in 44 rounds, and a semi-automatic version with an infrared sight called Devil Slugs, which can be purchased from Clio in Good Neighbor. When using this weapon, I found the pumping and reloading animations to be painfully slow, and the melee animation blocks half the screen and causes clipping with many outfits. 
That's not really this mod author's fault, though. All of these animations are actually reused from another mod on this list, the Ithaca Model 37. That fact has relevance because if you load both mods together, the animation files from one will overwrite the animation files from the other mod, so you need to make sure the animations that load last have been patched to support bullet-counted reload, or else both weapons will have their looping reloads broken. Otherwise, there's some other issues with this weapon. The iron sights look awful, they're not really aligned properly. I'd recommend using a reflex sight or scope instead. I also had a bug with classic holstered weapons where parts of the weapon disappeared off my back, but I guess that's not really a big deal. Thankfully, the weapon works well in power armor, albeit using lever-action rifle animations in third person, which don't look quite right, but in the heat of combat, you're unlikely to notice. As far as modifications go, this shotgun has four different barrels, three stocks, six different iron sights that all suck and are misaligned, multiple types of scopes, and a few muzzle attachments. Perhaps most interesting is the possibility of converting the shotgun into a rifle and making it fire 44 caliber rounds. Overall, this mod is okay, but NIF-bashed weapons just don't appeal to me. It simply looks too similar to the combat shotgun that's already in the game, which already looks exactly like the combat rifle, so now there's three weapons that function very differently but all look the exact same, and I really don't like it. The Mossberg 500 is up next, and it's the first weapon to have bullet-counted reload support built right in, no patch required. Sadly, this gun has no unique or pre-placed variants, and the way it injects itself into leveled lists is very annoying. When you hit level 16, a menu pops up to take you right out of the game and make you fill out a form for where you want this gun to appear. I would have greatly preferred these options to be in an installer instead, since the way it's implemented now forcibly interrupts whatever else you might have been doing. Thankfully, the gun itself is actually really good. The model and textures are beautiful, and animations are gorgeous. It feels good just shooting this weapon. Bullet-counted reload support has been done thoughtfully, although there's a little bit of clipping on non-empty reloads. Nothing major, though. Unfortunately, in Power Armor, we get hunting rifle animations again in third person, which sucks. Maybe the guy who made this gun didn't want the Far Harbor DLC to be a dependency, so he refused to use lever-action rifle animations. But that would have been way more acceptable. Oh well. Just stay in first person, I guess. When it comes to attachments, this gun doesn't disappoint. There are five receivers, two barrels, a heat shield, seven different stocks. There are underbarrel rails for mounting flashlights and lasers, seven different optics, although two of them require the see-through scopes mod to be functional. Beyond that, there are different ammo types to switch from, and not only can you switch at a weapon workbench, but you can also craft an ammo switcher item at a chemistry station that lets you swap between ammo types in the field. The only ammo type that's actually considered separate from shotgun shells is the Dragon's Breath ammo, which also must be crafted at a chem lab. This might sound good on paper, but hotkeying the ammo switcher and actually making use of it in combat is a little cumbersome. In conclusion, this mod is pretty good. If not for the bad level list integration and power armor animations, I probably would have given this mod my recommendation over the hunting shotgun. As is, this mod is a close third place in my pecking order. It's definitely one of the better entries on this list. The SPAS-12 is our fourth mod today. I know this video was supposed to be about pump-action shotguns, but this one turned out to be semi-automatic only in-game. In real life, you can use it in pump-action mode, but that's not a feature of this mod like I incorrectly assumed it was. That means technically this mod doesn't even belong in this video, but fuck it, I'm covering it anyways. This weapon doesn't have any leveled list integration or pre-placed spawns. The only way to get it is by crafting it at a chem lab. The gun itself is kind of ugly. It seems like someone broke the smoothing groups on this puppy. Just look at how the light reveals the polygonal structure of the weapon. It looks terrible. The animations aren't that bad, but they have the same issue as the hunting shotgun mod where you always insert a shell into the chamber even when that wouldn't be possible. Another annoying thing is the terribly tiny iron sights. I don't understand why this weapon doesn't zoom in when aiming, it makes it very difficult to shoot anything. For whatever reason, even though this gun uses the same bullet-counted reload mod as most others on this list, it has a unique issue of only loading five shells at a time. If you empty out a SPAS-12 with a capacity above that, you'll have to reload twice to fill up the tube. Worse still, the gun is not functional in power armor. It doesn't even appear until you take out another weapon, and then somehow, whatever weapon you use has its animations transferred to the SPAS-12. 
Needless to say, this results in shit breaking. I remained unimpressed when I looked over attachments. You can change ammo types, attach a flashlight or laser, change the magazine capacity, you can choose to fold the stock or not, and yeah, that's about it. This mod sucks. Fifth mod, we're getting through this, is the Benelli M3 Super 90. This mod is another one that comes in both 2K and 4K texture versions, and like before, I recommend the 2K version. In fact, that goes doubly so for this mod because all of its meshes and textures have been packaged as loose files, not archives. You can find this shotgun inside a root cellar behind a building in Sanctuary Hills, or on enemies since it's been added to leveled lists via script. This weapon looks okay and has half-decent animations, but the sound effects are terrible. They must have come from a stock sound library. When you try reloading, you'll realize that this weapon has some kind of built-in scripted reload that differs from the bullet-counted reload mod, and not in a good way. The scripted reload only works in first person, and it's impossible to interrupt your reload midway through. In third person, for some reason, sometimes after shooting, the weapon seems to drop out of your hands, pulling you out of sighting mode and generally being annoying as fuck. I don't know what causes this issue, but you can forget about using this gun in third person. In power armor, this weapon has the same problem as the AMAC 1500 from the last video. You can no longer jog in third person, you're stuck walking at a snail's pace. You can also no longer move backwards. To top off the shit sandwich, there aren't many attachments available for this weapon either. You get three different stocks, a useless shell holder, one reflex sight, a suppressor, there's three different barrels, but you should only use the long barrel, since using the short barrel with a suppressor causes this. Yeah. Forget about this mod, it's a turd. Next, we have the Ithaca Model 37. Exactly like the previous mod, this comes with either 2K or 4K textures, and is also packaged as loose files, so I'd recommend not opting for the higher resolution option. Through scripts, this weapon injects itself into leveled lists, and you can find a single non-legendary instance of it at Concord Civic Access, next to the Tattoo Magazine. There's also one legendary Model 37 called the Stag Slayer, located at Boston Police Rationing Site. This weapon uses the same animations as the T6M pump-action shotgun rifle. In fact, this mod is where those animations were taken from, so everything I said in that mod section about the slow pumping and reloading and ugly melee animation is equally applicable to this shotgun. Out of the box, the Ithaca doesn't have bullet-counted reload support. You'll load five shells regardless of how many you fire, but there is a BCR patch available and it works fine. When it comes to power armor third person, as expected, lever action rifle animations are being used once again, but like I said before, they aren't that bad. As for attachments, there's nothing special. A bunch of receivers, two barrels, a shell holder that increases reload speed, a reflex sight and scope, some muzzle options including a bayonet and suppressor, flashlights and laser pointers, a few different ammo types, and most interestingly, you can choose to slam fire the shotgun, greatly increasing firing speed. Overall, this weapon is just okay. Nothing great about it, but nothing terrible about it either. Second to last, we have the Winchester Model 1897. This weapon doesn't have any fixed spawns, but it is integrated into leveled lists. It's an attractive looking weapon, but by default it comes with the same kind of scripted reload that the Benelli shotgun came with, which is decidedly inferior to the real bullet-counted reload script, because you can't reload cancel and it doesn't work in third person. Luckily, unlike the M3 Super 90, there is a patch that replaces the unique reload script with a bullet-counted reload implementation. With the patch applied, the Winchester's reload is much better. As expected, of course, and I really must sound like a broken record, in Power Armor 3rd Person, we're somewhat disappointingly seeing lever-action rifle animations once more. Also disappointing is the dearth of modification options for this shotgun. There's only four receivers, no barrel options, no different stocks, no alternatives to iron sights. All this gun has is a suppressor, a bayonet, an option for more clean textures, some different ammo types, and the same slam fire modification as the previous weapon. That really is not enough in my opinion. If this gun had more attachments, I might have given it more consideration. Our last shotgun today is the Viper Arms Crate 6712, and this one looks like something straight out of science fiction. It's a rarity among Fallout 4 weapon mods, most of which are focused on adding realistic, modern-day weaponry. The crate looks like a shotgun the Institute would use. It's been added to leveled lists via script, but there's no fixed spawn or crafting option. 
Once you acquire one, you might appreciate the sleek modeling and texture work, but the slow, stiff animations are off-putting. There's also no built-in bullet-counted reload support, but luckily a patch has been made to rectify this. There's also a patch to help improve the animations by reducing camera shake and removing the ugly idle inspect animation. Even with these patches, the animations are still bad, but amazingly this is the one mod that actually adds proper animations for third-person power armor, so I have to give the author props for going the extra mile and adding functionality no one else bothered to, even if the end result doesn't look great. The crate has an impressive array of attachments, 9 receivers, 6 barrels, 8 stocks, 3 sizes of magazine tube, a dozen different options for sights, 3 muzzle brakes, a suppressor, 4 types of bayonets, 6 different material types, and 3 paint jobs. There's a lot of options in there. I think this gun is awesome. If the animations were higher quality, there's no doubt I would have picked this over the hunting shotgun. Anyways, that's the end of today's video. I hope I helped you find some good pump-action shotguns to place in your load order, so you can use them for the next little while until Bethesda updates the game again and breaks everything. Toodles!